Hi, this is Joe Offenberg again with another how-to video for DevOps change velocity. Today we're going to be talking about automating the approval of change requests. This is part of a series of videos on the DevOps adoption journey. So first we'll review that, then we'll talk about the benefits of using change approval policies. I'll give an explanation of how they work. I'll demonstrate those capabilities. And by the time the video is over, you should be able to understand how can you get started with this capability. One of the things we hope you come away with from this series of videos is that you don't have to do everything all at once, right? You can start out by just connecting the tools. There's a lot of value in getting the data into the platform. And from there, you can use that data for analytics. You can uh, manually create change records and attach the data to it. We call this change traceability. Uh, you could also just do the record keeping, automatically create change records uh, without actually holding up the pipeline. We call these change receipts. Of course, you can manually open those change records as well and still have an approval process, a manual approval process. But what you'll see very quickly is that you're going to have a lot of change records and your change managers are going to be overwhelmed because DevOps pipelines are all about making small incremental changes continuously. So you're going to need, uh, very quickly, you're going to realize you're going to need an automated change approval process and that's what we're going to focus on today. Now, the main benefit is speed, right? Velocity. You'll be able to deploy changes faster while also reducing the time that developers and change managers spend on the change approval process. And we could reduce risk because we could also reject changes, right? If they don't meet the criteria for an automated approval, we could reject them or we could escalate them for a manual approval. So those are three big benefits of implementing this solution. So how do they work? Well, first I should point out that change approval policies are actually a core part of ITSM's modern change capabilities, right? They're not installed as part of DevOps. You have them already as part of ITSM. However, this capability is extremely valuable to DevOps because of the overwhelming number of data points required to make a decision as to whether a change could be approved or not. So these data points are our policy inputs, right? We're going to use the data points to then come up with a decision. And the decision is going to be one of three possibilities. And, and you could have as many outcomes as you want, but typically you either approve the change, reject the change, or escalate for a manual approval. That means it becomes a normal change and somebody has to approve it. And the approval definition is the criteria that we use on those data points. So we're going to decide whether the data points fall within that criteria so we can auto approve the change. So by now you will have set up automatic change creation. That's the previous bubble in the adoption journey slide I just showed a few minutes ago. Now, after you have your changes automatically created, the next stop would be to create the approval policies so that you could automatically approve them. We provide guidance on how to do this right here in the DevOps workspace. So if we look at the uh, choices we have here, first we need to understand do we have a change being created as a model? And if we do, then we're going to have to use the process flow that goes along with that change model. So I'm going to go back to my application record here and see how I have my pipeline set up uh, and what type of change am I creating. So I look at my prod deployment step. I see that I am indeed creating a change using the DevOps simplified change model. So let me go back to the change model and then I can see the actual policy associated with that model. This is one of the models we provide out of the box and you absolutely can take this model and clone it and create your own policies and even add your own policy inputs. But these are the 14 or so policy inputs for the DevOps simplified model we provide out of the box. And these are the possible outcomes. So we can use the input uh, in this model and decide can we auto approve, auto reject, or if we can't automate, we'll send this change for a manual approval. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the policy inputs for this model. I see there, there are only three, uh, commits without work items, code coverage, and whether this change is containing partial data or not. Now, I'm going to change some of the uh, success criteria to make it more in line with the controls I'm trying to enforce. So let's go with zero commits without work items, 95% code coverage, and we want to make sure that the change, uh, that we do allow changes with partial data, just in case something is missing. Now I'm going to add a few more conditions here. Um, maybe we want to look at something like uh, risk. Now, 
Uh, risk is a good one. If you are doing risk calculations, uh, that can be like an aggregate of risk from various sources. Uh, but I'm not doing risk calculations. So let me uh, switch that out to something more relevant, such as like uh, some operational data, like number of open incidents and perhaps maybe, uh, let's see what else I could find here, current outages, right? So now I'm combining some DevOps type data with operational data, and that's always a valuable thing to do. So now that we have our decision table, let's take a look at how these decision tables are used in the DevOps change approval flow. Now remember, our change is being created with the DevOps simplified change model. So that means we have to uh, use the authorized state of the model to actually uh, trigger the change flow, okay? So if we go to the DevOps simplified change model here, we'll see that there's a flow for the authorized state. Okay, right here. So let me click on that. And that's going to take me into the flow. Now, just to confirm, this flow is only triggered when the change is of the type uh, DevOps change model. We could click on this and see the details. Uh, is DevOps simplified? And the category is DevOps. Okay, so that's important. And it's a DevOps change using the DevOps simplified model. It's going to trigger this flow. Now, let's scroll through this flow and we can see some details here on how the policy table is used in the actual flow. Okay, so if we scroll down, we see that there's a subflow that gets called. The subflow gathers all of the data, all of the change policy data that we need. And if we see here on the right side of the panel, we have all of the data points we need to feed into our decision table. And this is the flow that goes and gets those data points. So each one of these steps is responsible for collecting like the sonar cube data and the incident data and the outage data and so on, right? And that feeds into these metrics. And then what do we do? We take those metrics and you see these pills here all coming from step nine. Step nine collects the data. We feed it into that decision table. So each one of these represents one of the input variables that is used inside of that DevOps decision table. Then the decision table will spit out one of those three possible outcomes, right? It'll either uh, reject the change, automatically approve the change, or uh, escalate the change for a manual approval. And you can see here, there are some steps that happen even after that. So for example, if we reject the change, we're gonna send an email here uh, and let somebody know that the change is rejected. So let's see how this is gonna work in the real world here. So this is a Jenkins pipeline, and you can see this particular step of the change control step, we created the change, and then very quickly, in two minutes and 13 seconds, we automatically approved the change. So we fed in all the data points, the decision was made, the change record was approved. Now let's go to another one here in the uh, list of jobs here, and you can see in the next one, this one took 18 minutes, why? Well, in this case, we had to send the data uh, we had to send the change record for a manual approval. And, and the great thing is all the data was in the change record. So even if they're approving manually, they should be able to do it in a relatively uh, quick amount of time. But 18 minutes is a lot different than two minutes, but still not as bad as two weeks, which is how long it would have taken. So just to recap, this is the final stop in the DevOps adoption journey, right? We're going to uh, automate change approvals. And the benefit of that is obvious. We're going to speed up the process. Uh, remove the administrative burden, but also enforce compliance. And we went through the process of uh, how these all work, you know, all the different pieces that connect together, the change models, the process flows, and the decision tables. And then we demonstrated how this works in, in, in the real world. We also pointed you to the guidance in the DevOps change workspace. This will help you get started. If you need additional help, check out the DevOps community page. There you'll find answers to previously asked questions. You might have folks in similar situations as yourself who are trying to do this thing and have already done it, and they could also help answer questions. And there are uh, blog posts and other documents and so on, uh, example policies you can find there. And uh, you could always reach out to me, Joe Offenberg at servicenow.com. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Have a great day.